Hi guys, Tim here from ECU Testing. Welcome to part one of our ABS how-to video series. One of the most common complaints with modern day vehicles concerns the anti-lock braking system. You've probably seen it yourself. The constant illumination of the ABS and often traction control warning lights and a complete lack of emergency braking assistance from the car. In fact, this is so widespread that we can't even narrow down the issues to a certain make or model of vehicle. Today, I'll run you through a few tips on how to rule out an external failure causing a pump motor malfunction. Some of the most commonly reported fault codes for the pump motor fault problem are 01276 ABS hydraulic pump V64 malfunction, 5DF0 pump unit faulty, C1380 pump motor fault and the list goes on. And as you can see here, there are countless codes for the same fault. Unfortunately, the root cause is not always what it says on the tin and is often an external fault affecting the ABS pump and control module. Let's gear up and I'll show you what can cause this. If you want to figure out if yours needs sending in, then here are a few tips on how to diagnose a pump motor malfunction. Step one is pump motor testing. Quite often a pump motor fault can be an intermittent failure, so we need a reliable way of activating the pump motor on the vehicle when carrying out checks. To do this, firstly start the engine. Now use your diagnostic tool to connect to the vehicle and scan the ABS for fault codes. If faults are stored in the memory, clear the codes and try to run a diagnostic output test for the pump motor. You should hear the pump running at this stage. This can be attempted multiple times to identify the fault and in the event nothing happens, check the codes to see if the fault has returned and try clearing it again. If the fault is permanent, then carry on with the next step. Step 2. Often overlooked issues are wiring and supply voltage problems to the ABS pump itself. Firstly, check the fuses to make sure that they have not blown or have been damaged. Most modern vehicles will have two fuses for the ABS. One will be the main supply, which powers the module and its operations. This will be a low amp fuse rated between 5 to 10 amp depending on the ABS design. And when this fuse is at fault, we often see no communications to the ABS system. The second fuse is the one we are interested in, which is for the pump motor operation. This will be a high amp fuse, rated typically around 40 amp. Test the resistance of the fuse, which should be 0 ohms. If it measures open circuit, then replace and retest the ABS. The next step is to perform voltage drop tests. Initially check the voltages at the fuse. We're looking for typical battery voltage of around 13 volts. Now check this against the voltage at the ABS supply terminals, which should be the same. Any differences in voltage readings could mean that there is a high resistance in the loom, resulting in excessive voltage drop when the pump motor is activated. To clarify this, run another pump motor output test whilst checking voltages. And if there is an excessive drop of voltage at the ABS end, then this will confirm a wiring fault. If not, then the ABS unit is likely faulty and will need sending in to us. Whilst we are talking about supply, we shouldn't forget the ground connection at the ABS. To test this, check the continuity between the earth terminal at the ABS and the negative side of the battery. If high resistance is present, then there could be a similar fault with the loop. If the wiring in the vehicle itself check out OK, then you may have a faulty ABS pump and module. We can get this tested and rebuilt in just a couple of days. Head over to ecutesting.com to get started. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos and keep your eyes out for our next ABS how-to video where we will be looking at wheel speed sensor faults in the ABS. Take care guys and I'll see you then.